Listen, your career history is a red carpet, and now you're down bad looking for ways to improve your mechanics. So you hit up YouTube and binge watch a ton of videos on how to get good. <clears throat> Shameless plug. Excited, you hop into a deathmatch expecting to get so many kills, but instead of having a great time, all you experience is dying over and over and over again, constantly getting one tap back everyone you see. Yeah, Valorant has a thing for taking you to dark places. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So in this video, I want to take a deep dive into how you can avoid instantly dying the moment you see an enemy. So why is this happening to you? Well, if you're improving your cross replacement, movement, and raw aim but are still dying very fast, then you need to take a step back and analyze how you approach a gunfight in the first place. You need to remember, the prerequisite for any gunfight you take requires a proper peaking plan. Essentially, how you set yourself up before taking any gunfight is just as important as what you do during the gunfight. A big factor affecting your gameplay is how you appear on the enemy's screen, and we need to consider perspective when engaging in gunfights. Now I'm going to break down peeking into two categories. The first category is mechanical peeking, which solely focuses on how you peek using movement, cross placement, and distance. The second is something I like to call practical peeking. In this form of peeking, it doesn't matter how mechanically skilled you are, what matters is engaging in a gunfight with some type of advantage that makes it easy for you to eliminate the opponents without them being able to properly react to you. This includes concepts such as ability advantages, number advantages, and awareness advantages. In lower elos, focusing on either category will greatly improve your odds of winning gunfights. However, once you start reaching higher elos, you need to master both these types of peaking methods to win most of your engagements. Now, I'm going to show you clips of both good and bad peaks, and I want you to think of the difference between them as I talk about the sponsor of this video, Gozu Academy. Gozu Academy provides you with professional coaching, including actual pros. They offer multiple opportunities to improve your gameplay, including training methods, advanced theory lessons, and VOD reviews taught by some of the best in the industry. You also get to play in weekly 10-mans guided by those same coaches, which is a nice change from the traumatic rank experience. On top of that, every month, Gozu Academy brings in coaches from franchise teams to give you exclusive lectures. If you're determined to become a better Valorant player and want to be surrounded by like-minded gamers instead of toxic ranked teammates, sign up with my link for a free 30-day trial. In just 30 days with Gozu Academy, you can make improvements to your game that might take you six months on your own. Don't miss out. It's an awesome deal and I would love to see you guys benefit from it. Let's start by going over what you need to do to improve your mechanical peaking. When peaking, you are exposing yourself to areas where enemies could be potentially standing. The goal of improving your mechanics is to peak angles in a way that makes it hard for the enemy to shoot you, but easy for you to shoot them. This is a simple concept, but to actually apply it in game, you have to consider multiple factors. Firstly, your movement and cross replacement depends a lot on how close you are to an angle. Now I'm not gonna lie, this can be a bit tricky to grasp at first, so don't hesitate to watch this section again if you need to. I'll do my best to explain, so pay close attention. Thinking of your enemy's point of view is fundamental when taking gunfights. In a game like Valorant, there's a concept called angle advantage, which means that the distance you stand from a wall or an angle will affect how you appear on the opponent's screen. The player who stands further away from a wall or angle will be able to see the enemy player model first. So when you try to hold an angle or peak an angle, you should try to stand further away from the wall. Okay, so the concept of angle advantage is straightforward, but applying it in game is a little more nuanced. You see, you won't be able to stand further away from an angle or wall in every gunfight. So it's important to understand how to adjust your movement and cross replacement accordingly. Let me explain the difference between approaching an angle when you are the player further from the wall versus when you are the player closer to the wall. When you are standing farther from a wall or corner and want to peek around to spot an enemy, you get what's called an angle advantage, meaning you can see them before they see you. Start by standing further back from the corner, then shift walk moving silently as you get closer. Keep your crosser ready at the edge of the angle, not inside the wall, so you can aim as soon as you round the corner. You can use the A or D keys with shift to peek out as you are clearing the angle. By following these steps, your crosser will be on the enemy before they even see you, giving you control of the fight. And before I get to how to peek when you're closer to the wall, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so you can rank up faster. Let's try to reach 50,000 subscribers. Your support really helps me create more content and remember to join my Discord. Now, if you are close to a wall or corner and the enemy is farther away, you've got to be careful. This puts you at a disadvantage and the usual slow peeking strategy won't work here. If you try to sneak up, holding shift and aim around the wall, you'll be spotted and taken out instantly. The enemy will see you before you see them. And even though it feels like you lost super quickly, it's because the enemy had an easy time getting the shot on you. Because the enemy will see you first when you are close to a wall, you can't just sneak around like before. Instead, pre-aim your crosser into the wall and do a quick two-step peek. When you peek like this, move sideways. That means using A or D without holding shift. Be sure not to bump into anything like another player or the wall behind you because that will slow you down. This quick perpendicular peek is hard for the enemies to react to, so it gives you the time you need to get the upper hand. Wow, now that was a lot of info. Let me recap what I said to make it more clear. 
When it comes to the basics of mechanical peaking, you have two options. You either slow clear an angle while rounding your crosshair on the edge of the wall, or you pre-aim your crosshair into the wall and do a perpendicular peak. In both peaking styles, you should stand as far back as possible without bumping into the wall behind you. However, because of the way the maps are designed, you must peak certain angles with the first style and other angles with the second style. The purpose of discussing angle advantage and distance is to help you determine when you should use either form of peaking. If you are standing further from the wall than your opponent is, then you should slow clear the angle while rounding your crosshair on the edge of the wall. And if you are standing closer to the wall than your opponent is, then you should pre-aim your crosshair into the wall and do a quick perpendicular peek. Now, to apply this in game, you need to practice these two peaking styles when slicing the pie. Slicing the pie is when you clear angles one at a time, and while most of your peaks will require you to pre-aim and move sideways, you need to learn where you should slow clear certain angles and round your crosshair. Try this in deathmatch. Study how to move and aim based on your distance from an angle. If you go into a deathmatch knowing the methods of peaking, movement, and crosshair placement, your mechanics will improve very fast. And before you practice, you should keep in mind that not every good peak will result in a kill. You might perform a peak perfectly, yet still lose. Understand that peaking involves taking risks. You can't predict where every opponent is all the time. Occasionally, you will need to make a decision to check an angle, and unfortunately, someone might catch you off guard from a different spot. Improving game sense and team play can help reduce risk, but there will always be a certain level of gambling. It's inevitable in all elos. Now that we've learned how to peek mechanically, let's dive into the practical side of peeking enemies. When I say practical peek, I mean using advantages when exposing yourself to an enemy. These peeks rely on the enemy not being able to react properly to you in a gunfight. Plus, these advantages can help you get a kill regardless of your mechanical skill. There are three aspects to practical peaking. These include ability advantages, number advantages, and awareness advantages. Let's talk about ability advantages. In higher elos, having an advantage with your abilities becomes one of the most crucial ways to peak opponents. Many players can land incredible shots, which is why abilities are the key way to counter players with solid mechanics. Imagine being skilled with flashes. Players who can surprise opponents with well-timed and unpredictable flashes can defeat anyone no matter their rank. Other examples include mastering smoke placements that disrupt the enemy's peaking plans, or using strategic setups as a sentinel for easy kills. You can even combo different abilities to make peaking easier. For example, stunning an enemy with a sky dog and then quickly following that up with a jet dash. The more your abilities mess up the opponent's vision, movement, and reaction time, the higher the chance of winning your gunfight. So think about how to use your utility or even mix different utilities to make the enemy's point of view chaotic. This will make winning gunfights easier and you won't solely rely on 1v1 aim duels. The next aspect of practical peeking is number advantages. Abusing number advantages is as simple as peeking with your teammate to make a gunfight a 2v1 instead of a 1v1. You need to understand that peeking with a teammate gives you a huge upper hand in gunfights. Just think about it. Whenever you see two people swing at you, you probably have panicked and found it hard to aim. So know when you peek alongside a teammate, the enemy also feels flustered. Furthermore, peeking with your teammate allows one of you guys to quickly get a trade, unless both of you have potato aim, which does happen sometimes. The way you can create a number advantage is by asking a teammate to swing an angle with you or by looking at your teammate's position and just following behind him so you can swing when he swings. You don't always have to talk to your teammates. Just knowing that you should swing when you see your teammate swing can help you secure more rounds. The third aspect of practical peeking is awareness advantages. This means peeking opponents when you have some kind of information or timing that lets you catch the enemies off guard. To improve your information gathering skills, it's important to not always play passively. Keep control of different parts of the map so you know where players might be. Practice thinking about where enemies could be based on where you know they are not. It's like a real-time process of elimination. Another way to get better at gathering information is to save abilities like Sova Darts, Fade Scans, or Sky Flashes for situations when you're about to fight. Knowing where the opponents are will make you mentally ready for a peak, and it's a big advantage when enemies are unaware of your position. Now, let's talk about timing. Timings occur when you peek an opponent and catch them off guard. Good timing makes peeking easier because enemies won't have their crosshair pre-aimed at you when you swing. This is one of the toughest skills in Valorant. One way to improve your timing is to come up with strategies or plans that distract the enemy team so they don't expect your swing. Improving your peeking skills will improve your odds and gunfights, but remember to not overlook the importance of a consistent warm-up and aim training routine. Watch my last video where I share tips for better aim. See you there!